record. Hey guys, it is the raw wrap up of Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. This is the second week here. We're using Blab for a change. We're using Blab. So uh, if you guys can join us here on Twitter, or if you already are, if you can join us Mondays uh, almost directly after Raw, as soon as we can get everybody off of the Hangout and onto here and all set up. Uh, like I said, I'm Mike Sorg out here in uh, Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to rock it with you guys from WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Shouts to our friends SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. ProWrestlingTees.com. Slash WMS. With me from Poughkeepsie, New York. It is Mad Mike. How are you, Sorg? I'm doing fine, sir. Excellent. I'm doing fine as well because uh, Raw is turning into a sitcom. It is. And I love it because it's it's... You know what? We'll get into a bit of that. Uh, but also joining us, he's our friend of the mainstream media. He's a producer from an unnamed local TV production company. No, that was a weird way to put that. But he is Matt Carlins. How you doing, sir? I'm your pal in the mainstream media. And I'm he's here. Move. I'm, I'm here. I'm moving to another room so that people can scream at the television while the football game's on. Because oh, uh, there you go. we want to talk about some professionalized wrestling. Professional falling down, Sorg. And this is your first blab, I believe, too, right? It is. This is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying I'm seeing people popping into the chat. I want you all to tell me how dumb I am. Feel free. <laughs> yeah, tell us what you guys uh, were, we're just talking about Raw, tonight's Raw. If you watched it, let us know what you think in the chat. Please tell a little bird and uh, see if we can get some more people uh, in here as well. Uh, so uh, let's get right off. Well, first of all, uh, you made a comment there, Mike, about uh, Raw being a bit of a sitcom tonight. Yeah, I, I got to say, though, I, I like it because, I mean, they always say this is Friday TV. And I think the best uh, era of Raw was when they tried to be the Jerry Springer show. So why not? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, well, I mean, we have to talk. Sword, there is huge happy news that we need to talk about. We're gonna have over. We're gonna have ourselves a wedding, Sorg. Well, as soon as there's some gold involved, yes. Th there's gonna be gold involved, Sorg. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, oh, I'm the question. The question is who's gold, Mike? I don't see an obvious candidate, which kind of only gets my brain more interested. Um, in trying to figure uh, out who's Matt, gold he's gonna go after. Matt, what do you want, do you want to know? Who's gold? That's gonna be. Yeah, who's? Tell me. Who who just super kicked John Cena in the face tonight? Well, yeah. well, I guess he's going to have to get a belt here at some point, huh? Uh, oh, so inauspicious. Total Divas Raw crossover in the final segment was mm -hmm. pretty much exactly what I needed tonight, Sorg. All kinds of amazing, definitely. Pretty uh, amazing. Pretty amazing overall final segment was pretty amazing. And I know you were down with it, Sorg, because it had this like throwback attitude era vibe to it. The stories were starting to mingle in with one another. It was it was really fun at the end. We don't have this seg segmented thing. We're going like through the night and there's stuff happening and it's not just like tailing us away for what's going on and what's going to lead us until 11.05 at night. It's, it's, it's just there's segment and every segment was in its own right, for the most part, entertaining, right? Um, something happened, and it's something that I didn't have to watch all night to get. The biggest thread through the night was still a Seth Rollins Kane thing, and deservedly so, and that ended at 10 o'clock. I think they're doing a big thing here where they're they're not pushing you past a, a, a two-hour, um, you know, span, uh, uh, attention span on, on a, on a storyline like that. They also wanted to give Sasha Banks a big match. Well, there's that too. Uh, well, but no, but they, they did a lot of stuff like that. I, I can't even remember all the stuff tonight because there was so much. Now this is the new problem. We had a Divas match with, I, I mentioned before, I was hoping that we would have this pretty cool kind of side feud happen on the shows, um, you know, while whatever was going on with the Divas title with uh, Paige and Natty Neidhart. Perfect. Everything was perfect with that stuff. Um, and, and, you know, everybody else is getting involved. The, the Wyatts and, and uh, the, the new Shield, I guess we can call them, are, are going at it in a six man. We talked about, you know, we love the idea of maybe Hell in a Cell turned into like a war games kind of thing with these guys. I mean, it, it just, there's a lot going on. Just because you're not at the top of the card doesn't mean anything. And really, everybody's on this, you know, slid down a slot on the card because of Brock Lesnar versus Undertaker. But even I'm, ex I'm, I'm interested to see the, the Bray Wyatt versus Reigns 
Hell in a Cell. I feel like they've been building a really significant feud here, especially in the last couple months with this, uh, you know, out of really the team ups. But but still, like they're the core of it. Like they're kind of the the, the heads of these factions that are kind of reforming. Um, I, I don't know. What do you guys think of that? Um, honestly, I was not doing somersaults over the first couple hours of the show, but mm-hmm. I thought the last hour was was really, I don't want to overstate it. It was really good, though. The final hour was really good. It felt like it had a lot of momentum. It felt good to be at the end of the Raw, and like instead of being there at the end of the Raw, and I kind of was dreading us having to be there and watching. I, I was dreading that Dudley's and... Rollins and Kane would end up being the main event of the show, and I didn't want to sit and watch it. So once we're past that, I'm like, well, the Open Challenge is the main event. And then when the New Day comes out, you're kind of like, yes! And I can't like recall the last time I was that kind of like fired up for the main event of Raw. Usually I'm just like, let's get this over with and go home. But tonight I was like, let's do this! I'm ready! Let's do the main event! And then they delivered Sorg even better, not just setting the pieces in place, but they delivered too. And they delivered... Also during that final hour with Rusev and Summer Rae, which was awesome. And they delivered with um, the boss, Sasha Banks, coming home and having a fun, a, a really good Divas tag team match. That might be the best um, six-person Divas tag match since the Divas Revolution started. So I'm with you. I'm, like, with I'm, you. I'm not saying it was the greatest match ever. It was a pretty good match. But I'm just saying a lot of them have been disastrous. This one's actually felt like it was going somewhere. It had a purpose to it. and, and Well, it she- actually also had... It had some heat behind it too because they actually had oh a segment to make it mean something before. Granted, they just stole the um, the linchpin plot reveal of Ocean's Twelve being the Boston Red Sox versus New York Yankees feud. But still, as a New Yorker, I'm totally fine with that. Even though the Red Sox team won, wait, no, maybe I don't like this. I don't know. No, but you know what? You make a good point. <laughs> Getting people, it, it, all it takes is just a little bit of anticipation, you know. So you, you know the Bellas pull up in their limo, and and Sasha and the girls pull up in your in their Escalade, and you're like, and, and like we were in the hangout sorg, and we were watching the limo pull up, and we see the Escalade, and I'm like, oh my god, there's an Escalade, that's got to be Sasha, and she gets out, and you're like, yes, you know, that's the way it's supposed to work. We're supposed to. It be, was it was the we, jets we go, and the yes, sharks. Yes, give me this right now, and you're like, yes, here it is, and you're like, yes, I will watch this now. This is how it's supposed to work. But the whole show wasn't perfect, but I thought the last hour was a huge step in the right direction. Certainly. Look at all the <laughs> props I'm getting. <laughs> they're from me, but I wanted right. to oh, they're point from up your me. number. Oh, I'm giving you some... Good it's props gonna to you for propping me. All right. <laughs> We're figuring out how the platform works. Um, awesome. Like, like I say, so much other stuff happened. Um, again, the, the Kane Seth Rollins thing is moving along. I'm enjoying that just completely thoroughly uh, through, throughout the weeks here leading up to Hell in a Cell. The, uh, way, the way they did it tonight was awesome. It's great. Where, where uh, Seth was trying like Triple H told Seth to essentially attack Kane first, but I don't think Seth got the same message. His message was okay, I'll bring out handcuffs so Kane can't go to the back. But then, oh no, Kane got knocked off the apron so hard the handcuffs broke. It was a great setup. It was very similar. Uh, I, I know you're not watching SmackDown, but they did something on SmackDown uh, two weeks ago, I think, where he was ringside. Actually, it might have been last week, where he was ringside for, for the tag match, and Seth went and attacked him. And then they they did it basically the exact same thing where somebody helped him out and he had to stop and turn back and smile and then Kane comes out and kicks his ass. I I love it. It's like a Roadrunner cartoon and and it, it just it just well no no Sorg you know what this is mm. all right uh, Sorg Matt you guys are all old school Looney Tunes fans right mm-hmm. do you remember the Sylvester and Tweety cartoon? Where Tweety found the Dr. Jekyll Mr. Hyde potion. Yeah. That's what this is. That's exactly what this is. The, the, the potion's just sitting back there in gorilla position uh-huh. looking for him. I love it. I love it. It's, it's exactly what it is. It's, 
Raw has been consistently entertaining for the last few months. I even I've been enjoying SmackDown. I really enjoy the MSG special that they had on Saturday night. Felt like uh, a cross between like old school uh, Saturday night's main event, and and it didn't have it wasn't weighed down in all the crap that Raw is, and didn't need to have the purpose that a, a pay per view did. Right? Um, it didn't need to have plot progression or anything. It was uh, it was a more than a house show. But still had that vibe of a yeah. Good you, house you show. say it didn't need plot progression, yet almost every major angle from tonight referenced it. That's true too. That's true. So too. yeah, I I mean I I will say this: I didn't get to see all the special yet, but it was definitely the best wrestling I saw this weekend. <laughs> Sorry about that, TNA. I um, watched TNA. Don't do it to yourself. I seriously want to know if, there, if this is a side note, but if there's anybody out there, and I see we got a question in there, but I can't read it on this monitor. There it is. Um, um, but 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 if there's anybody, but if there's anybody out there that liked the Bound for Glory TNA pay per view, I seriously want to hear from you. I want. I just want a counterpoint because I'm pretty sure those that watched it on the show tomorrow night are not going to be very kind to it. So, uh, what do we got here in the chat? Um, Ed Burke is saying that I'm expecting Power Rangers style transformation sounds every time Kane goes into the back, and I love it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mastodon, Pterodactyl, Triceratops, Saber Tooth, Tiger, Demon Kane. Mm-hmm. Go, go, Demon Kane. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, so we had ladies, we had uh, tags, we had uh, anything else of significance happened tonight. Uh, Seamus came out and kicked Neville in the face is the only other thing. It was uh, short. We had a little kind of nod of, hey, you're from the United Kingdom. I'm from across the pond as well. Maybe something could happen here. There was like a spark of magic, and we just left that be and walked away from it. Uh, So, and you know, these things happen. We all referenced the WWE 12, I believe, uh, storyline of the United Kingdom with uh, those two and Drew Galloway, or Drew McIntyre, what the hell his name was back then. Uh, so to be fair, it's still Drew McIntyre. He's still calling himself the chosen one. He's still losing title matches. He's still being an idiot. Man, it's still Drew McIntyre. Man, being Vince's chosen one is really a death it's now. It's not where isn't you it? want to be. That's not, not where you want to be. No, it's not what needs to happen. Nope. No, 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 no. All right. Anything else you want to touch on before we get out of here, guys? Uh, uh Stephanie Stephanie segment with the new day. Yes. Stephanie, yes. Stephanie, knowing exactly what to say of the new day, holding up her finger like if I hear that trombone, then then, then Suplex City is gonna look like Disneyland. Like once uh, again, dealing with the children, right? Uh, as as we've seen her like with 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 uh, people in the past, it, it just it's just perfect. It's like I'm just gonna uh, treat you like you're an insolent child. And it's real, real good. So, good. Well, it kind of plays into the other stuff, too. I mean, people were kind of sneering at it because of their perception of Stephanie's characters being this very uneven um, mm-hmm. thing. But, um, you know, once you got to the end of the show and you kind of saw the way the New Day came out and how they um, were at least saying that they were going to be more serious, you kind of started to like be like, okay, I could, you know, maybe playtime's over just a little bit for the new day. Maybe they're going to get just a little bit of an edge. They don't need too much. They don't need, I, I wouldn't give them too much because it's a lot more fun to watch them be jerks. But with a little bit of an edge, um, it's a lot easier to boo them. And we are still supposed to boo them. I think and, we're still and, supposed and, to boo them. And a little bit of Christian. Get it? Edge and Christian, New Day. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. See, Mike, you love to compare the New Day to Edge and Christian, and um, I will grant you that is a valid comparison. I think a better comparison, though, is to the New Age Outlaws, uh, not just because of no, the no, genesis of the team, but also because of how they reached a point where, where they were very hated for a brief moment of time, and then proceeded to be just adored by the fans from then on out. And I think that's kind of like the same trajectory. I think the outlaws is a better. Uh, mm, I don't know. I, yeah. I think if anyone's like the outlaws, it's uh Enzo and Cass over on NXT. Well, we'll see once that uh, we'll see how that plays out. Once they get to the main roster. Um, oh, I, I think they'll be fine. I hope so. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, was there anything else on Raw? I can't really think of anything else. It was lot. Kevin Owens came out and did stuff. Uh, he wait, wrestled oh, the wrong member of Lucha Dragon. This is the wrong member. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully, he gets the other one next week, right? Or maybe on SmackDown. Yeah, seriously. Like the uh, the shorter one this time. Um, well, uh, give me the little one. But isn't that the little one? Isn't that? It? I will take his tail off. <laughs> Isn't that exactly what I was talking about, though? Like, I just want these guys to come out and not just keep fighting the person they fought at the last pay per view until they get to the next pay per view and weird, weird, weird combinations. Uh, like, let's just have them come out and and beat up somebody who's insignificant in any storylines, which was Sin Cara, right? Which used right. to be Zack Ryder, you know, and, and and just let him be. Like, let's just see him being the badass IC champion. You know, and just just building that up. Great. Yeah, get awesome. out there. Show us your cool moves so that we know what to get excited for when next time we see you in the match. Then we yes. feel better about about Neville getting the job match earlier with Sheamus. Mm, I don't know about that. Well, it, it, it made it not hurt so bad when we saw Kevin Owens just being awesome. So that's my take on it. Yeah, I don't know. Because Sheamus and Neville put on good matches. Like, what it, it's like it's like the Owens and Ryback and and Ry, uh, Rusev thing last week. I would have liked to see that match. Like, but it's not like they're gonna give you the match. They're just gonna do a random spot and then they're just gonna go away with it. I still think we we're looking way too much into the Wade Barrett thing. I don't think anything's gonna happen. I think they should team them up. I think they should just put them in a tag team. And, got, uh, I mean, Barrett and Neville, think about why not? It. You got Weiss, you got this mini shield, you got um um the, the Neville Dragons thing happening, you have the, the cosmic wasteland, then you have like maybe they maybe we just have this like crazy faction war. Maybe we're building up for something interesting for Survivor series this year. Well, I know at least one person who would be very happy if we had all teams for the Survivor series. Um <laughs> Chat room just got weird. Anyway, um, someone who just jumped in a second ago, I think her name is Vera, and she said that the um, the Seamus Neville match looked botched, and that Seamus looked surprised that the match ended early, and King Barrett looked a little shocked too. But I didn't really notice anything like that. Maybe I wasn't looking for that. Eh, Seamus should be used to beating guys from NXT in eighteen seconds. Yeah, Keep yeah. that's a again. Daniel Bryan <laughs> joke. <laughs> All right. On that note, um, th- th- thank you. Thank you, everybody that jumped in here. Oh, on- oh, oh, there was one thing I wanted to mention. Oh, they did an awesome ad for Bailey versus Sasha at- for uh, NXT, and that's something they should be doing more of. Right. Right. It- like, not only did they give Sasha a really good moment by having a nice long match and her getting a clean win over Alicia Fox, but they had a really good promo package for it. And if if you're in this chat right now and you're not watching NXT, you're not watching NXT, watch NXT. The first month of the network is free. You're probably gonna like watch it. Takeover Brooklyn, then watch Takeover Revent uh Honestly, respect. Just like start month. with Brooklyn and just roll yourself back through all the all the takeovers and arrival specials. Uh and you'll 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 figure it out. You know, you don't need to go week mm-hmm. to week necessarily. Sometimes it gets a little well, I don't know about this, but certainly, certainly check that out. So um uh, on that note, I missed what the next thing I was going to say was. Uh, so, uh, Matt, uh, rise above cancer. Rise above sword. cancer. Rise oh yeah, rise rise above cancer, cancer month again as well. Uh, oh oh, that it's was not going thing. over as well as it did last year. Sorry. No no no. Um, <laughs> the point I wanted to make was, uh, did, do you feel like it's feel? You know, we have too many events now. It seems like they're always like, well, we had this ev- this live event happen. Now this live event's happening Wednesday. Oh, and we have a pay-per-view in two weeks. It felt like we we're getting event heavy when we're talking about Raw because they have to plug everything through Raw. Remember, Raw's the vehicle, right? Everything else. Remember, we barely hear anything that happened on SmackDown. Remember when you were asking about Hell in a Cell and you're like, oh, wait, apparently there's a Hell in a Cell with between Bray and, and Reigns. Yeah, because they actually did something of significance on SmackDown. And don't get me wrong, I think everybody should be watching SmackDown. If you enjoy WWE product and good WWE product, you should go watch SmackDown. I think it's damn entertaining, at least when I watched it on Saturday morning with a bowl of uh, uh, shredded wheat and just enjoy the thing. You know, um, that's my take on that. Uh, but but no, uh, you know, Raw is where they have to let the groundwork basically for the rest of their television for the rest of the week. So it is heavy. It is so heavy right now. 
Um, but no, I, I just I just thought that was interesting that we had the live events uh, Saturday and then Wednesday again. It just felt like we're putting over the network, but it felt like there's just a lot going on. I'm, I'm afraid they're going to overboard it a little bit. Well, but, we, we kind of went through a similar stretch like that. I want to say around when they did Elimination Chamber and they just decided to slip that one in. I want to was there an NXT special around that same time? It felt like stuff really stacked up. I think it might have. I think it might have been one around there too. I don't, it was a Wednesday night one. It wasn't one of these like Saturday night takeovers like they did in Brooklyn mm-hmm. or anything. So, um, but I think when they make those other decisions, they're not paying attention to what's happening with NXT too. No, but I mean, yeah, because they, they look at it as separate. They look at it as a separate brand. Yeah, they do. You do, and I don't think they worry about scheduling wise for the most part. So, but I don't you, know. Make the, you make the correct point about. Um, about Raw being the gateway. The Raw is the key to everything. Raw is what gets people to the pay-per-views. If you want people to pay for pay-per-views, it's what gets them to the network. So that is why it is so important that WWE make Raw a better television program so that people will keep watching it and not stop watching it. Um, so tonight, step in the right direction. It felt, it didn't felt overwhelmingly different from other Raws, but I sensed perhaps a slight philosophical pivoting in a way um, just because the show actually felt like it built momentum um, throughout the show. Hopefully the ratings reflect that this was a pretty good show for the most part, especially towards the back end. Hopefully, because if it doesn't, then I guess our opinions don't matter. That's no good. That's no good. Especially since I feel like the last couple of weeks of raw have been some of the best efforts they've done in a while. So but it's the training of the audience. It's the trend, right? If you're like, well, they haven't been got, uh, right, uh, right, you know, great for forever, and then they are, and you're you're still not going to slide back. Plus, there's football to watch, apparently. So there's that. Guys, thank you so much. I thought it was a great conversation about Raw tonight. Mainstream Matt, Matt Carlins. He's writing columns over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Look for his columns on Thursdays and his Around the Indies at IndieWrestling.us. Getting a lot of attention on both fronts. Thank you very much for contributing to those, good sir. It is my pleasure, Sorg. I'm so busy typing, I barely have time for talking, but it's nice to get a few minutes to talk to you here tonight. And also from uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, Mad Mike, the only person on the show who has a future endeavor letter from WWE corporate office. That's for real, guys. That's it's him. true. It's true. It's framed. It is. It is. And I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters. Please hit me up. Any of your questions, comments, anything else, let us know. And we're here live, live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 9 p.m. Eastern time, going all the way through midnight with the Indie Mayhem Show. I am not sure who our interview is this week. It's Eamon's week to uh, book. And uh, we'll be talking about all the wrestling news fit to discuss on uh, and some not fit to discuss and some not fit to discuss uh, quite honestly thank you so much guys for joining us thank you for joining us in the blab we'll see you here next monday as well